Good morning, guys. I'm Kim Trathen, business and marketing coach, and we are going live to talk about the top three things you need to focus on when you're scaling your business. And I am available to answer any questions that you have for free live business coaching. So first, I'm just going to pop into the group, make sure that this live stream is showing like it should be. So let me just make sure of that. Hopefully some people can join live. We didn't get the invitations out very early for this. Um, so hopefully some people can join live. And I have some questions to talk about that were submitted ahead of time. Um, so let me make sure this is, I don't see it showing live in the group. Why is it not showing live? If somebody's popping on live. If you can drop me a quick comment and let me know if you found this in the group. Oh, there we go. It looks like it just had to, um, had to refresh on the desktop. So let's start with a little music. I pulled up an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, I always like to, if you're new to my live streams, I love starting with a song because I think it's fun. So let's see, I pulled up an oldie but a goodie. You guys will have to tell me if you know this one. And it's Friday, we're super excited. Gotta get dead. You guys ready? It looks like we have a few people hopping on live. Drop me a hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, 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 Who's ready? Get, ooh, this will be good. Get your questions ready right now. If you have questions you want answered, get them ready. All right, say hello guys. I wanna make sure my comments are working. I see a few people are online. All right, ladies, this is gonna be so good. We're gonna cover a lot today. I like that boom, boom, pow. Them chickens jacking my style. They try to copy my swagger. I'm on that next shit now. Who's ready? All right. I don't want to get put into Facebook jail. If you guys haven't heard me give this warning before, if you play music that you don't have the rights to, they will strip it out of your live videos. Um, I think one time I got a note that I was like banned in China. Like my video was not, not me totally, not my accounts, but that my, my live stream that I did was banned in China because of the rights to the music. So I don't really know what that threshold is. I don't like to push it. I don't like to push it too far. All right, let's see here. I will tag for any of you. Um, I just started inviting people to the event this morning uh, that didn't get done yesterday. So anybody that did mark they were going to the event, <clears throat> excuse me, I will make sure to check that later. And I will make sure to tag anybody in the video in case they're not on the live. Oh, here we go. Now Facebook is kind of showing me who's on. Hi, Michaela. Good morning. Good to see you. I love your hair, by the way. Um, I think I remember when you posted that that was new. I saw it in one of the groups. Um, hi, Holly. Hi, Deb. Oh, afternoon for you. Deb, where are you watching from? Um, I know Australia, South Africa, you guys are quite a bit ahead of us there. You might be done with your work day on Fridays, right? Um, awesome, ladies. I'm excited, excited, excited. Hi, Shraddha. Thank you for saying hello. All right, guys, we're going to jump in and get started. So I hadn't done one of these free live business coaching sessions in a little while. And what I love doing, what I love about doing these is it gives you the opportunity to submit your questions and actually get live feedback on it. Okay, not everybody is already working with a business coach um, or is currently working with one. So this gives you guys, my audience, an opportunity to get together your questions and get them answered. So if you have, if you don't have it already, Grab something to drink, okay? I got my water and my coffee right here. Um, but grab a pen and paper because you might wanna jot down some notes during this, especially if you submit a question and you wanna make sure that you that you have the notes written down correctly. Oh, Deb, you're in Newfoundland. Cool, cool, I love that. So what we're gonna talk about today, guys, is we are going to talk about kind of the top three things that you need to be focused on when you're scaling your business. And I want to make sure that everybody is clear on exactly what I'm referring to because scaling your business might look like signing that first client or it might look like scaling to a new income level, right? There's all different things that go on inside of your business, but there are still three main things, three main steps that you need to take no matter which level you are trying to scale to. So I want you to really be thinking about your business and exactly where you're at in business right now, right? What is the number one thing that you are focused on changing, improving, growing? What is the number one goal 
that you have in your business right now and grab pencil and paper if you don't have it yet, I want you to write down that goal right at the top of your paper. So if your goal is to hit $5,000 a month, let's say, then I want you to write that at the top of your paper. If your goal is to sign your first client, if your goal is to launch a first group program, whatever your number one goal is that you're working on, go ahead and write that right at the top of your paper. Okay, so let's say your goal is to hit $5,000 a month or $10,000 a month, whatever that next goal is for you. And then I want you to list when you want to hit that by. Okay, what, what is your time frame for this that you have in mind? Because this is the goal that I want you thinking about when we're doing the free live business coaching. Okay, stay hyper-focused on that, that front runner goal that you have. Okay, we wanna keep that front of mind. Don't start getting sidetracked with if there's other people's questions. Stay focused on that and ask the questions that you need answered to help you move forward in your business. That's what the goal of these sessions are. Okay, hi, Jessica. Oh, you're in Alberta. Yes, I love it, love it. Um, so what we're gonna do, um, I think I'm gonna cover a question that was submitted first, and then we will go ahead and talk about the three things that you need to be focused on to scale your business. So as you have questions come to mind, just feel free to drop them right in the chat here. Um, I've learned it is super helpful for me if you at least include what it is and who you help, okay? For example, I'm a business coach and I help female entrepreneurs and then put your question, okay? Because sometimes I need that information to give you a really specific answer for your business because not everything is the same across the board, okay? And I wanna be as helpful to you as I can be right now on this live stream. Um, so go ahead, make a note of that um, and try to remember to include what you do and who you help in case I need that information to answer your question. Um, it's just easier to have all of that, all of that information up front. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna talk about today was a question that somebody submitted this week. Somebody asked it this week. And the gist of it, I think it was Debbie, um, I think her name is Debbie that asked it. She said, basically, how am I supposed to promote my business when I'm not allowed to promote my business outside my group? And I had a little bit of a back and forth with her to understand what she really meant by that. And I think that she meant that she is affiliated with a network marketing company and according to their terms or an MLM, um, according to their terms, she's not allowed to promote the business outside of her own group. So there are a couple different things with that. Um, number one, I hear that from a lot of people. I think that's been a little bit of a trend. I think network marketing kind of got a bad rep for a while there because they, they were getting this reputation of their people being really spammy in their marketing and it turned off a lot of people. So I started, I don't know, I'd say a couple of years ago, I think some, some companies came up that didn't want that reputation associated with their company. So they made that rule for their people. Like we're gonna kind of create curiosity and we want people reaching out to you asking you, um, sorry, let's mute my laptop there. Um, so there seemed to be this trend with that, and I think that that has, has grown. Um, this also can come into play. A lot of Facebook groups, you guys, you know, I allow you to promo your business in my group, but a lot of other Facebook groups don't allow that for multiple reasons. Um, so sometimes entrepreneurs, even if you own your own business and you're not in the same position as Debbie or somebody who is affiliated with a network marketing company and they're not allowed to promote their business outside of their own group, sometimes other entrepreneurs feel that too. Like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to use these groups if I'm not allowed to promo in them? So really this applies to a wider range of people than just this maybe network marketers that aren't allowed by their by their corporate to promo other wares, other places. So the number one thing that I um, that I always recommend with this is that your content in your marketing, your content should be doing more for you than just making sales. Okay, your content should be used to grow your audience connect with people, start building that relationship, which is really all part of building your personal brand. Whether you're a solopreneur or whether you're affiliated with a network marketing company and you're running your own business that way, um, you really want to be building a personal brand. Who you are as a person 
is incredibly important to building your business and growing your business in today's day and age. Okay, again, regardless if you are a solopreneur and you're the sole owner, you actually own the business, um, regardless if it's that situation for you or a network marketing situation. Some of the top people in network marketing that I've seen over the years have been able to pretty seamlessly switch which company they're affiliated with because they had such a strong following based on their personal brand. So even if you can't go into these other Facebook groups and tell them that you're launching XYZ or you have this program, um, you can be going in there and you can pro be providing value so that you're attracting people to you, you're building those relationships, and then if you're in a conversation with them, then you can go ahead and invite them into your world, right? Whether you have a means of getting them on your email list or if you run a Facebook group, um, whatever that looks like for you. So regardless, this personal branding, I feel like personal branding was a term thrown around quite a bit there for a while. It kind of became like a catchphrase. And there's so much more to it than just like telling your story one time. Okay, there's so much more to it. It's your energy. It's who you are as a person. It's what it would look like for them to work with you. Um, there's, there's all different things that grow into it. Oh, hi, Deb, you're on. Um, excellent. Yeah, you said that's correct. Okay, so that's what that's what I thought you were saying. Um, so remember, this personal brand is so much more than just like dropping an intro post. Okay, so often I see women that will drop an in intro post into a group, and then they kind of drop drop and dash. Right? They drop an intro post, and then they feel frustrated that nobody commented or it didn't get much engagement brainstorm of all the ways that you can provide value to the groups that you are participating in, okay? Again, and sometimes some women um, that I've talked with over the years that are in network marketing, this seems a little bit harder for them because they, they were handed a business to run as opposed to having to figure everything out in the beginning. So they're kind of thrown into it as opposed to growing as they grew their business, growing as a marketer, growing as an entrepreneur. So sometimes they feel a little bit more, I think, thrown into the fire with building a personal brand than sometimes what some entrepreneurs feel that um, are starting their own business from the ground up. So really think about that because you can start to bring people into your world. And remember too that um, when you do form a group, you're still not just selling to them all the time, right? If you can only promo your business inside of your own Facebook group, make sure that you are building real connections with those people. Continuing to build your personal brand with your audience is one of the number one most important things for you to do in your business. Um, okay, it looks like, let me know if you guys have questions on that. Okay, hi, Karian, good to see you. So Karian said, we service people who want to learn how to trade, um, and because of our industry and so many scammers, we're banned from running Facebook ads. So annoying. Yeah, uh, Facebook ads are a beast, guys. Um, there are a lot of rules around running Facebook ads. I'm just gonna jot down a note here for myself. Um, so last year at one point, last year, I don't know, a couple years ago, I was running Facebook ads. I was, I was kicking off a program called Automated Money Makers, and it was all about building your e-course to create passive income online. Even back then, so there's just a lot of scammers, period, right? So Karian, when you think about this, um, I want you to really remember that it's, it's not just your industry, okay? Just in general, there's a lot of scammers in the online space. So there are a lot of rules set out to protect people. Um, and yes, it can be annoying as the entrepreneur when you know that you have good intentions and you're not scamming people. Um, I ran into this too when I had that automated money makers program. Facebook ads have gotten really strict and they have been for a couple years now. Like you can't, you can't promise people that you are going to make them money. Um, I basically, my program was called Automated Money Makers. I couldn't have the word money. I couldn't have passive income. I couldn't even say like, I'm going to teach you how to create a course to create passive income. I couldn't have any of those words in it because it was a flag for Facebook and they just wouldn't even let the ads run. They, they would not approve them. Um, and if you're not aware of this, guys, it's not just your ads, okay? If your ad... So for me, my ad was running about my automated money makers course. So they would click the link and it would take them out to a landing page. Facebook also goes and looks at that landing page. They want to make sure you're not running an ad for one thing and then trying to sell people something completely different, right? So even on that landing page, I had nothing in the ad copy about money or income, 
but the title of my landing page was about automated money makers and they would shut that down. So they checked the landing page too. Um, I felt like at that time, once, once they saw that on my landing page, I felt like it was even harder to get my ads approved because I felt like they thought I was trying to like pull a fast one on them. So if you are new to running ads or you're trying to figure out how to run ads, make sure you read the Facebook rules because they have a ton of rules. You can't say anything. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example for this. You can't say anything that by somebody clicking on your ad might lead to them getting discriminated. You may not be discriminating, but for example, um, the only example I can think of right now is to use a religious-based one. If, if you ran um, a, let's say, a Christian dating company, you cannot run an ad that says, hey, Christian singles, okay? Because then, even though you're not discriminating, right, you're just saying, like, who you who you service, right? You're a Christian dating company and you're saying, hey, Christian singles, because that's who would be using your service. You can't do that because according to the Facebook ad policies, by somebody clicking on that, now Facebook has information, right? Now they have clicked. Somebody knows that they, somebody knows their religious affiliation is being Christian and that could be used to discriminate against somebody. So sometimes these rules are there to protect people again, right? The rules are there to protect people, but it can be really hard, for example, that Christian dating company to create an ad that is going to bring in their people, meaning their ideal clients, because their ad copy alone can be deemed discriminatory. So there is, there's, there's a lot that goes into running ads. Um, that's why too, guys, like if you, if you hire an ads manager, it's not a cheap service. It's not a cheap service to hire. Um, I would say from the from the pricing that I've heard from people, you typically will pay anywhere from three to five thousand dollars on up just to um, just to secure them as your ads manager, and then there's still the ad budget behind that. So learning ads is a beast, um, Kieran. In regards to yours, the best advice I can give you is that now I don't know if your whole account has been banned. That's completely different. Okay, if Facebook has banned your whole ad account, that's a whole nother story and you would have to go through them. If you really mean the ads that you have been created are getting rejected when Facebook reviews them, because guys, if you haven't done this before, every single ad is submitted to Facebook for the review process. If you really mean that your ads are not being um, approved, they're being rejected by Facebook, that's a different thing then. Then now it's time to think outside the box and think about value that you can provide to your ideal clients without promising them anything about making money. I'm just guessing with what you do that that is the bottom line issue with yours as well, just like I had with the automated money makers program. But if your whole ad account has been shut down, then you have to go through the Facebook appeals process and see if there's anything you can do from that end. If it's just that your ads aren't being approved, then it's time to get creative and think about how you can provide value to people um, without promising making them any money because that I know that won't get approved. Mine have been turned down for it before. All right, guys, looks like we have some more ladies hopping on. Awesome, awesome. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Susan, if you're still on. All right, guys, um, answered a couple of the questions that came in. Catch the replay if you're interested on in those. We talked about building a personal brand, and we talked about Facebook ads, and I'm just keeping my eye on the time as well. Um, so now, guys, we're going to get in and talk about one of the topics that I get so many questions on that I wanted to make sure to talk about this with you guys today. But remember, top of your page, I want you to have your goal written at the top. Um, if your goal is to hit $5,000 months consistently, write that goal at the top of your paper. If your goal is to hit 10K months, if your goal is to sign your first client, if your goal is to pass 100K, if your goal is 200K, um, if your goal is 10 signups by October 15, right? Whatever your primary goal is, that you are focused on achieving right now, that number one goal that you have in mind, right at the top of your paper right now. If you don't have paper, go grab a pen and paper, okay? Because we're gonna talk about the top three areas that you need to focus on to hit this goal. Sorry, needed a quick drink of water. So we're gonna talk about the top three areas to focus on to hit this goal. And then as you have questions coming to mind, Right? As we talk about each one of these three things and you have questions coming to mind as it pertains to that specific goal, because that's the number one thing for you to focus on. Okay, That is your top goal to focus on if that is the goal you want to hit. So then as we're talking about these three things, jot down any questions that come to mind 
drop them in the comments. You guys have my undivided attention for a while longer today. Um, so I can answer as many questions as they keep rolling in. Um, once we get through this training until probably close to noon, I can stay on. So if there's enough questions coming in, I'm happy to do that for you guys. So the top three things that we need to talk about when you are looking at scaling your business. Number one, and I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, is your strategy. Okay, you have to have a strategy in place. These goals are not going to magically manifest themselves. Okay, you have to have a strategy in place of how you're going to hit that goal. Most women that I talk to have either a number of clients, especially if they're earlier, okay, especially if you're kind of more in the startup phase, then a lot of times women have a client goal. I want, I want to sign my first client. I need to get two clients. I want to figure out how to get consistent clients. Um, I hear oftentimes I want three clients a month. That is the number one answer I get when I ask people how many clients they would like to be signing each month. It's three clients. At some point, I start to see a shift in this. And as they start getting clients, they've built this foundation, right? They've served some clients. Then oftentimes the goal that I hear starts to transition into more of an income goal, right? Because maybe they're scaling their pricing. It doesn't take as many clients to hit their goal. Um, so with that, you need a strategy, whether you're looking at the number of clients you want or you're looking at an income goal. Maybe you want to hit those coveted 10K months, right? That's a big one for a lot of women. I want to hit 10K months. Um, so you need to think about underneath strategy, there's three things that you need to think about, okay? So this is just underneath the umbrella of strategy. Okay, we're gonna have three umbrellas today, three things that we need to work on, but we're gonna talk about what's underneath each. So for the umbrella under strategy, there are also three pieces that I want you to think about. Number one, what is your strategy to attract clients to you? Okay, this is super important. You need to have people to sell to. You want to be attracting your ideal clients, those dream clients that are ready and excited to talk with you. You need to have a strategy for how you are attracting them. Okay, so think about that. One thing that I want you to do right now is I want you to pause and I want you to look up at that goal. If that goal is three clients a month, if that goal is 5,000 a month and you know that that's one or two or you know clients, However you have that goal right now, I want you to pause and think about how are you currently attracting clients to you, okay? How are you currently doing it? Um, and if you don't know the answer to that, that's a big sign. That's a big sign that you are trying a whole bunch of things without a specific strategy. Almost that analogy, right? We're like throwing spaghetti at the wall and we're just gonna see what hits. Like, well, I don't know, I show up here, I show up there, I do this, I do that. I have no idea, I have some people reach out to me. You should know exactly where your prior clients have come from and you should know exactly where you plan to attract new clients, okay? Do you have a Facebook group that you're running? Do you have an email list? Are you active in other Facebook groups? Are you using Instagram? Are you using TikTok? Know exactly how you're going to attract the clients to you to hit that goal. And I want you to write this down, okay? You have this paper, you have your goal written at the top. Write down number one strategy. And underneath that, letter A, do mine the same too, A, B, C. Okay, so letter A, how are you attracting the clients to you? If you have questions about that, this is your chance to drop them and have me answer them live, okay? Kirian said, thanks Kim, and just our ads get constantly rejected, but I'll go back and get more creative. Yeah, I know for sure you can't say anything about money. Um, if you look at their ad rules, um, I, I think that used to be spelled out pretty clearly at least. So I think you're going to have to get more creative. Glad your whole ad account hasn't been shut down though, Carrie Ann, because that is a nightmare. Um, I know a couple of people that have had major issues with their ad accounts and it's an absolute nightmare, I think, to get it fixed. Um, awesome. Okay, guys, drop your questions if you have them about your strategy to attract clients to you because this is a really, really important piece to be able to hit your goals. The second thing that I want you to look at underneath of your strategy is how you're serving your clients, okay? How are you serving them? Does this need to be scaled to scale to a new level? Now, if you are looking at signing your first couple of clients, this probably isn't as big of a deal because you likely have more capacity in your schedule. That may or may not be true, right? Women who are still working in corporate don't have as much capacity as somebody who is not working in corporate but doesn't have a really full coaching calendar yet, let's say. So take a look at how you're serving the clients. Is the way that you are currently serving them, is it um, in alignment with the goal that you want to hit? 
For example, if you are charging, um, let's say you're charging $500 for your coaching and you want to scale to $20,000 a month, and that's one-to-one -one coaching, that's not really in alignment, right? You would have to have so many one-to-one -one clients. You would want to scale that pricing up so that you have fewer clients, fewer one-to-one -one clients that you need to hit that goal. Um, and obviously we're all working ethically. We want to make sure that you um, are providing the value to justify the investment and all of that. Compared to if you're running a group program, right? Or maybe it's time to scale into groups. If you've been serving one-to-one -one and you've been scaling that pricing, then maybe you want to shift into groups. But it's really important that you look at the clients you're currently serving and how you are currently serving those clients and really map out, does that make sense with your overall strategy of this number one goal that you're working toward achieving? Because if there's a disconnect there, right? The example of like a $500 one-to-one -one coaching, but you want 20K months, like you wouldn't have enough capacity um, to provide good quality coaching to that many one-to-one -one clients, right? It's not about cranking them in as fast as you can when it's one-to-one. -one. Now, if you're providing something on a bit more automated basis, right? Maybe it's run more as a self-study self -study coaching program. That's different because you're not there live with them. So it's really important that you think about the, the strategy that you currently have in place with how you're serving your clients and look at the goal that you're aiming for and get really honest with yourself. Can I do this specific current strategy? Can I continue serving my clients just like this and scale to this next income level or this next client goal, um, whatever, that, whatever that goal looks like for you. Um, get really honest with yourself about that. How many clients do you need to hit that goal at your current pricing? How much capacity do you really have inside of your schedule to do that? And do all of those pieces line up? Does the kind of do all the pieces of the puzzle come together? Um, and again, if you have questions about this, guys, this is your time to get your questions answered. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna make sure nothing else has come through since Karen's. Okay, it looks like we're good. Um, if you guys are just hopping on live, we are talking about the three areas to focus on when you're scaling your business. Grab a sheet of paper, write the number one goal that you're working toward right now at the top of your paper. And then we're gonna kind of talk about three buckets or three umbrellas today that you need to focus on. And the first umbrella we're talking about is strategy. So underneath that, you need to look at your strategy for getting clients and the strategy that you're using to serve your current clients. The third, the third little spindle that I want you to think about under this umbrella of strategy is efficiency, okay? Oftentimes, we are not working at our optimal efficiency. Um, I remember back when I got engaged, people thought I was crazy that we did, how long did we do, June? We did a five-month engagement. And I had so many friends at the time, like, you know, it was like wedding season in our group of friends. So like everybody's getting married and like everybody's doing one year long engagements. And I did five months. And I remember one of my friends said to me, I don't understand how you can plan a whole wedding in five months. And I said, I truly believe we take as much time as we have to do it. So I knew I only had five months. So of course I picked a dress faster. You know, I had friends that took three months just to choose their dress. Um, I think it's the same with our businesses. We take up as much time as we need to, and we can, to hit whatever goal, right, whatever we're working toward, we take as much time as we have allowed to us, as we have accessible to us. So oftentimes, we feel like we're working at our maximum efficiency because we're like moving, right, from one task to the next. We're, we're moving pretty quickly between them, and our time is always filled, but really, we're using the time that we have. And if we stop and instead of saying like, okay, I have X time to do a task, instead if we flip it and we start to look at, okay, where can I improve this efficiency? How can I get better? Not reducing quality to our clients, but how can I improve my processes? Can I, can I batch create my content? Do I need to hire a VA? Um, so this applies to both you and your team. Right? If you have a team or you're looking to scale, maybe that's what one of your goals is. Hire your first VA or hire an online business manager. Um, if you're looking to scale into a team or you already have a team, this is something that is really important for you to think about. It's part of that longer, right, that longer term vision planning that you do for your business to make sure that your business is running as efficiently as it possibly can so that you can continue to provide high level service while getting even more clients served, right? At one point in time, um, 
well, for a while there, I'm, for a long time, you could not go live into a Facebook group from Zoom. That has greatly improved the efficiency of both me and my team because the amount of time that I used to spend downloading those call recordings, saving them to the computer, then uploading them into the Facebook group for my group clients, that could take, you know, even if it takes 10 minutes, but you're doing that time and time again every single week, that becomes a giant time suck. The fact that now, because of Zoom and Facebook integrating, the fact that now I can go into Zoom and stream it live right in the Facebook group so my clients are still on the Zoom live with me asking their questions, we're having a real-time conversation, but now that call recording is just saved in the Facebook group. That has been a tremendous time saver for me. So really think about where you can get more efficient, more efficient for you and your team. Because when you have your strategy nailed, when you know exactly how you're getting clients, you know you're serving clients um, the right way, I'm gonna put that in quotes, that's different for everybody, but you're serving clients the right way to set you up to hit your goals, and you're, you're functioning at optimal efficiency, those three, those three things together, getting clients, right? Getting clients, serving clients, and being efficient, those three things right there underneath your strategy are exactly what you need to hit that next goal. Okay, it's not about cramming in like more hours into the day. That's the biggest thing to get across. When these pieces are working well for you, this process, this strategy should feel really good for bringing new clients into your business and serving and serving your current clients. Um, let me know, guys. Do you have, give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. So I'm gonna grab a drink of water. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense or drop a question. If, if any part of your strategy is not currently working for you, then drop your question right now. Okay. I don't see any questions coming through. All right, ladies, we're going to move on then. Second piece that I want you to focus on when you are looking at scaling your business and hitting that big goal that you put that you put up top. Hey, I should ask you guys to share too. If you if you don't mind sharing, I would love to hear what your goals are that you wrote at the top of your paper. So go ahead and comment below. Share share with us your goal. I think there's something really powerful about um, stating your goal, stating it out loud, sharing it with other people. Um, I think there's I think there's a lot of power that happens with that, which actually is a great lead in to the number two piece that you need to focus on, which is your mindset. Okay, and the reason I say that was a really good lead in is because your mindset is so, powerful doesn't even feel like the right word. It is powerful. Um, the sneaky thing with mindset is that when it starts to falter, when it starts to waver, when you start to not feel as confident, you start to question yourself, What's sneaky about it is that it, it's so personal, right? And because it's our own brains tricking us into thinking that maybe we're not good enough or we're not smart enough or um, imposter syndrome kicks in, our brains are sneaky and we believe it's the truth because we feel this way, right? Hi, Lisa. Um, we feel this way. So the more that we can recognize how powerful mindset is, and we can start to do some work around that, the more likely we are not to sabotage ourselves. I've had this in my own business too. That's right, the saying, new level, new devil. Um, I dealt with more mindset issues. I didn't deal with as many, let me word it this way, I didn't personally deal with as many mindset issues launching my business as I did scaling to higher income months. For me, I think that that was where I started to hit my, my max capacity of comfort, okay? Um, if you guys haven't read the book, The Big Leap, I love that. He explains that everybody has an upper limit threshold. It's like how, how much happiness you think you are deserving of. And when you hit that limit, that's when self-sabotage starts to happen. And it doesn't always look like, you know, imposter syndrome is one that's really easy to talk about and a lot of people do battle it, but it's not, it doesn't always look like that. It might look like picking a fight with your spouse. Okay, it might look like having turmoil with your team. It might look like um, over overspending and overdrafting your account. Um, it might look like all different types of struggle in your life, personal life or in your business life. It doesn't always look like sitting down saying, oh, I can't make more money because I'm not worth it, right? That's why it's so sneaky. That's why it's so sneaky. Okay, hey, Lisa. I'm gonna to try to expand your comment. Lisa said, I'm a brand strategist for women in business. I wanna get two to three webinar funnel consulting clients per month. I love it. I 
I love it, love it, love it. I want to get away from done for you services. What can I do to find the clients and be more efficient? Oh, I love that. Um, so if you're providing webinar funnel consulting, okay, so it sounds like, um, if I'm understanding right, Lisa, it sounds like you are building out those webinar funnels for clients that you've been doing the done for you services with that. Um, I'd be really curious to know if you've already built that out for yourself. I, and I, I say that because I talk to so many women where they're like, I do X, Y, Z, like I design websites, but I actually haven't done my own yet. Right? Like it's that, um, I don't know where you're located, Lisa, but. I know here in the US we have the saying like the plumber has leaky pipes, right? So often we are so good at doing things for our clients that then we neglect in our own businesses because we're we're busy or we're burnt out or um, we think family has to come before our own business, you know, all these different things going on. Um, because I would really think, and I know a lot of people that are super successful with the webinar, um, webinar launch system or webinar, um, webinar system where they run paid ads to the pre-recorded webinar, right? So they run paid ads for the pre-recorded webinar. Then at the end of the pre-recorded webinar, then there's the call to action to get on a call with them, right? Or they do a pitch for a lower end program or they pitch getting on a call with them. That has been a system that has worked really well for um, a lot of entrepreneurs. And if you can start to automate that, right, if doing paid ads is something that you are looking to hire out or something that you have expertise in and you can set it up yourself, um, that would be a way to automate it. Um, another way that keeps a live component to it, if you want to be doing live, and again, I'm just assuming if webinars is your specialty that you want to be doing webinars in your business, um, so another way to get people is to really focus on building your email list, okay? So whatever, whether it's a video, whether it's a PDF, um, and then really promoting out your live webinars to your email list um, or your Facebook group, right? So again, I'm just assuming that you want webinars incorporated into it because that's where your, it sounds like that's where your zone of genius is that you've been doing, um, that you've been doing for your clients. Now, if you, if you're like, Man, I don't want to do webinars, right? Like I'm sick of webinars. Um, let's see. I hope you guys can still hear me okay. I just got a low battery notice on my phone. Um, if you are actually burned out on webinars and you don't want to be doing webinars, then you don't have to sell that way, right? You need to build an audience somewhere. It's really, I'm glad I still see that the live is still going. I was worried with the low battery. <laughs> um Okay, yes, it sounds like you, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the comments over here with my phone losing a charge. Um, so it looks like you are interested in doing the webinar. Um, perfect. For anybody else that's maybe in a similar space but doesn't want to do webinars, then really building that community, okay? Building that audience somewhere and then having the opportunity to just, you put the information out, you create those value posts, right? Invite them on a call with you. Connect with those ideal clients. Um, Lisa, let me know if you still have... Um, Oh yeah, I see here you said I can be the person who does it for others, but not as much for myself. Definitely busy. Yeah, you are not alone with that. So, so many um, from uh, branding experts to website designers, um, financial financial coaches. I've heard it from almost every, every line of business that you can imagine. Um, you're definitely not alone with that. I hear that all the time. Um, and that's something too that coaching can be really helpful with because one of the things that I think coaching is so great with is it gives you that dedicated time in your business to focus on your business growth. I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of entrepreneurs that are not working with a mentor or a coach are suddenly like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Like my business feels like this chaos around me, like this, this disaster doesn't even feel like organized chaos. Um, so I think having that dedicated time to focus on your business growth and having that accountability is huge for a lot of people. Um, if you're if you're ever interested in chatting, just you know shoot me a message and we can chat about what it could look like to work together. Karian said, "My goal is to get ten extra paid members in our academy by month end and fifty by the by the end of the year." I love that, Karian. Great goal, great goal. Okay, guys, second thing, right? We're talking about these these big umbrellas, and I really hope my phone doesn't die before we get through this. I can't believe it was that low of battery. It must not have really been charged. We have several charger cords that aren't working, so I must have had it charging earlier on a cord that wasn't really charging it. Um, oh, you're welcome, Lisa. You're welcome. So under this mindset umbrella, okay, mindset is so important because, like I said, you can start to self-sabotage for all different ways 
or for all different reasons in all different ways. Doesn't always look like something, I think imposter syndrome is a pretty clear one, where most entrepreneurs hear enough about imposter syndrome that they recognize it as a limiting belief, even though it feels true in their heart of hearts. So one thing that I want you to do right now, um, I want you to think about where how your mindset currently is, okay? Because with mindset, there is there's two different two different things that I want you to think about. There's a proactive approach to your mindset, and then a reactive approach. Okay, proactive and reactive. So when I'm talking about proactive, I want you to think ahead of time. Okay, we're projecting out. We're thinking about tomorrow, the next week, the next day, and what do you need to do to keep your mindset strong? What activities? Um, systems, rituals, whatever term you want to use, um, scheduling, again, whatever term resonates with you, what can you build into your everyday process to keep your mindset strong? One thing that I know for me, um, I've talked to my business bestie about this several times, is that for me, even if it's just a walk during the day, but getting up from my desk, doing something, whether it's like an actual hard workout, right? Going for a jog, finally did that again yesterday. Um, going for a walk, whatever it looks like for you. Journaling, okay, that's another big one for me in the mornings. Um, kind of get those thoughts out. What practices can you build into your every day ahead of time to keep your mindset strong? And a big part of that, guys, what works for me might not work for you. If you hate jogging, don't go for a jog. That's not going to feel therapeutic for your mind, okay? And that's really what this is about. We're talking about a strong mind. Um, so think about what resonates with you and what will truly help you continue taking action, the right actions in your business every day. So that's the proactive approach to mindset. The reactive approach comes in when we're reacting to something, Okay, um, for example, a common thing that a lot of women struggle with is they launch a program and then they don't hit their goal. They don't get as many signups or maybe they don't get any signups, right? It happens to people. Maybe they don't get any signups um, and now they're feeling embarrassed, uh, maybe shameful, um, upset, frustrated. They feel like it was a waste of their time. They have all of these negative emotions going on and all these negative voices in their head. So now you're reacting to not achieving your goal and that mindset can be especially detrimental to your business growth, right? Because now you're having all of these negative thoughts and these negative feelings that are starting to consume your mind and consume your body, right? We have a physical response to stress and emotions, right? We can feel physically like that, that, um, that emotion, that embarrassed emotion. Um, I've had women tell me that they are too afraid. They want to scale into launching a group program, but they're too afraid to do that because they're afraid they won't get signups or heaven forbid they get one sign up. And now what do you do, right? You, you just marketed this as a group program and you had one sign up. What on earth are you going to say to that person? Okay, so there's so much fear and embarrassment. So knowing... Okay, oftentimes these proactive things, like for me, journaling, jogging, apparently it's things that start with J. Um, journaling and jogging are two that if I can instill that into my everyday, I am mentally stronger because of it. It feels therapeutic for me, right? It gets those negative thoughts out and processed. Um, then if something happens where um, I'm, I'm reacting to something, I am better prepared to stay mentally strong when maybe I don't hit a goal, right? Let's say I don't hit a goal, that happens. I love, I just started listening to Brooke Castillo's um, Life Coach School podcast. I, I, I'm new to this. You guys may have listened to it years ago because I was like six years old or something. Um, but I am absolutely loving how much she focuses on this mindset and the thoughts. Um, it is such a good, guys, if you haven't listened to her podcast, go ahead and listen to that, okay? Just Google it. You can find them on YouTube or whatever. It's so, so, so incredibly good. And she really explains the um, the coaching model that she teaches about how your thoughts drive your feelings, which create your which drive your actions that create your results. So when we can change these thoughts, okay, something something negative is going to happen to us. That's life. That's business. We're not going to hit every single goal that we set out to achieve. There are going to be things that knock us down. But if you're already doing this practice, if you already have these daily things instilled into your everyday life of this proactive approach to keep you mentally strong, and then you can recognize what is fact and what is fiction in your brain when something knocks you down, right? So let's say you launch a program 
and nobody signs up for it. It doesn't mean you're a terrible coach. It doesn't mean you're a terrible consultant. It doesn't mean you're a terrible entrepreneur, but those are the thoughts that we can start thinking if we're not mentally strong. Okay, I highly, highly recommend her podcast, guys. It's so good. Um, so think about, think about this, okay? When, those, when you're reacting, when you have those negative thoughts coming into your brain, what are those thoughts? Get them down and how can you change those thoughts? Okay, how can you change them? Because when you understand that those thoughts are actually driving your emotions, okay, if you instantly have a response and you instantly feel fear, let's say, okay, fear over launching a group program or um, fear over launching even your, your business, right? Or fear over scaling to the next level, fear of serving more clients. If, you, if you're starting to have that initial reaction, you have to go back and focus on those thoughts. Those thoughts that you have are driving that emotion, and then you can you can sit down, right? We can we can look at this. We can now change those thoughts. Um, what one thing that I have loved to do when I go for a jog is over and over in my mind, the thought running through my head is um, strong entrepreneurs make strong are strong in mind and body. A strong entrepreneur is strong in mind and body. And then I flip it and I just say, I am strong in mind and body. I am strong in mind and body. It keeps me physically going and it keeps me mentally going, okay? Let me know if you guys have questions about that. This is something really powerful that I've really, I've really been loving lately. Um, so our first umbrella that we talked about was strategy. Our second umbrella was mindset. The third umbrella is kind of more of an action step, okay? When you're looking at hitting, look again, guys, look at that big goal that you have written at the top of your paper. What is that number one goal that you are aiming for right now? Okay, that goal is, I know it's important to you. I know it is because it wouldn't be a goal if it wasn't important to you. So as we talked about under mindset, things won't always go as planned, right? Things, the, what is it, the best laid, what is it, the best laid plans lead to hell? I don't know, something like that. Like you can have the greatest intentions, you can have the greatest plans and things can still go awry. So this third umbrella that is so important to focus on when you are looking at scaling your business is evaluation. Okay, so we have the strategy, we have the mindset, now we need to evaluate what's going on with both of these pieces. Evaluate and tweak, evaluate and tweak. Okay, so um, what I do with my clients, I teach them, okay, I do some consulting and some coaching with my clients. So if I just taught them a strategy, now they're gonna implement it, and on the next call, we're gonna evaluate it. Okay, teach, implement, evaluate, okay? If you don't do the evaluation piece and you just give up, that's when entrepreneurs truly start to fail, okay? They give up on their business. They give up on their dream. They give up on their goal. They think it's not meant for them or it's not going to work for them. That evaluation and tweaking process is so incredibly important with every step of your business. Um, I love, I think, I think one of my mentors originally said this, that she liked to view our businesses as like lab experiments. And I love that analogy because if we don't actually try something with our audience or try something in our business, we don't know if it's going to work or not. And it's okay, but if it didn't work, it doesn't mean you hide away in shame. It means you sit down and evaluate why. What did you do? What could you have done differently? And what would you want? What different result did you want to get? Why didn't you get that outcome you were expecting? And now what can we tweak and try to make different for next time? Okay, so those are the three big buckets, guys. Um, I'm gonna pause a minute and see. I don't think any other questions have come in. If you have questions about hitting your specific goal, this is your chance to drop them, guys. Guys, we have just a couple minutes left together. Um, so if you are interested or curious about how, well, let me recap here first. So the three things that we talked about focusing on in this live stream was your strategy, your mindset, and then evaluating and tweaking, okay? Because if you don't evaluate and tweak, you're giving up, right? You have to evaluate and tweak. And if you hit your goal, now it's time to evaluate and tweak how you're gonna scale it from there. So just because you hit your goal, like evaluating and tweaking is not only done if you didn't hit your goal. You always evaluate and tweak. That's how you continue growing in your business. Um, so if you have been curious at all about what coaching could look like for you, how coaching could help you hit that big goal at the top of your paper, I want you, stick around a minute because I wanna do a little exercise with you. I have a couple more minutes left. I want you to do a little exercise. So you've written down, you've made some notes about how you're gonna hit that goal, your strategy, your mindset. Um, what I want you to do now, I'm just gonna, I want you to draw down, I want you to draw a box, okay? Give me a little pink box. This is where you are. Um, oh, Karen said, please repeat the lady's name for the podcast, I missed it. It's Brooke Castillo. 
it's I think C-A-S-T-I-L-L-O or C-O-S-T-I-L-L-O. If you even look up Brooke and the Life Coach School podcast, I'm sure it'll come up. Okay, so you're gonna draw two boxes on your paper, okay? Can you guys see that? You're gonna, I want you to draw two boxes on your paper. Box number one is where you are right now. Where are you right now in your business? Box number two is where you want to be. Boy, that's really bad writing. You guys probably can't even read that. Sorry. Okay, this first box is where you are now. And then here's where you want to be. Where you want to be is that big goal that you wrote at the top of your paper. So what do you want? Okay, what do you want? Was it 10K months, 5K months, three new clients, your first client? Okay, where you want to be is that big goal. So I want you to fill that in right there, okay? Whatever your big goal was. Compared to where are you right now? What's going on in your business? If you want to hit um, 10K months, let's say you want consistent 10K months and you're currently making 2K per month, um, then you're gonna fill that in on the now. Okay, so where are you now and where do you wanna be? And then sometimes it feels like a giant mountain is in between where you are now and where you want to be. This mountain here, okay, this is, looks more like a triangle, but we're calling it a mountain. This mountain here is whatever you think is currently standing in your way of getting from where you are now to where you wanna be. Okay, so your, your strategy, your mindset, uh, evaluating, those are all things to try to get you up this mountain. What are these things, okay? I'm gonna put a big question mark on the mountain right now. What are the things standing in your way from where you are now and where you want to be? List them here. What are the things standing in your way? Because these things standing in your way are the things that you need to overcome or resolve to get from where you are now to where you want to be. Hi, Gia. Oh, so happy you could hop on for a minute. These things that are standing in your way, um, whatever they are, if you feel like you don't have time to do your marketing, okay? No time to do your marketing. Um, you, you can't invest in ads, um, no money, uh, not, sure, um, not sure where to find clients, okay? Um, not sure how to market a group program, right? Whatever these things are standing in your way are the very things that you need to dive into first. These things that are blocking you are not going to magically go away. Oftentimes, they're not even going to magically go away by just showing up consistently. You usually need more going on than that, okay? Not, not more of your time, but you need a specific strategy. You want things working smarter, not harder, to pull out that old cliche. So if you're curious what coaching could look like for you, this, guys, is what coaching does for you. We address these blocks. We address these things that are in your way. I teach you the strategy to actually get more clients online so that you can scale your business faster and get over this hump, okay? We want to take you over the mountain and get you from where you are now to where you want to be. If you're curious at all about what that could look like to work together and help you hit your goals faster, um, you can either just drop the word consult here or shoot me a DM. All we would do, guys, there's no obligation. Um, we would chat about, we would just have a conversation, talk about where you are, where you want to be, and then talk about what that would look like for us to, to work together. But we'll, we'll spend some time together and dive into really where you want to take your business. Um, ladies, it was so wonderful to have you on. If you are interested in that, let's connect. Um, shoot me a DM if you want, or you can just drop the word consult. Anybody that drops consult, I'll reach out to you and we can talk about, talk about your business and what coaching could look like. Um, this was wonderful, ladies. I'm so glad to have you guys on. We are pretty much at time. I'm going to do one final look here. Okay, I just lost comments on my phone, so I'm going to do one final check over here. I don't think any other, it doesn't look like any other questions have come in. So excited to connect with you guys. Reach out if coaching is something that you're curious about. Okay, if you are curious about it, I am happy to chat with you about it. And have a wonderful Friday, whether it's morning for you or evening for you. Have a fabulous Friday, and I will see you guys in the group.